When designing your Elevon control system, first decide if you want to install your servo in the bottom of the wing or the top of the wing. If you're building a collapsible wing and wish to have your servo arms and control horn fold up in between the wings, I recommend installing the servo through the lower surface of the wing. For almost all other applications, it's recommended to install the servo through the upper surface of the wing. Now that the wings are constructed, it's time to create the elevons. Refer to the main arm and wing video for details on this, but in general, you will remove a strip of paper from the very trailing edge, about half an inch, peel the paper off, create a nice bevel, and we'll also bevel out the hinge for the control surface right down to the paper. Apply tape into the hinge, and then on the top surface, and then create a nice sharp trailing edge there. Now that the control surfaces, the elevons, are finished, it's time to cut out the gap in the center of the elevons. So we're going to aim for a 14 inch gap here. I'll take 7 inches off of here and here, from the midline that is, which will actually amount to about 8 inches on the diagonal, both sides. Cut that straight back with a sharp knife finish the edges and we'll put the servos in. Once those central sections of elevon have been removed, you'll need to finish the trailing edge of your wing here, otherwise the tape will peel up. Packing tape is great, but it's very difficult to lay down flat, so I like to use colored duct tape instead. The rear of the wing and this trailing edge does see a little bit of abuse too if you use rubber bands as your wing tie downs, so it's not bad to have a little additional reinforcement back here. You may choose to trim off a bit of the elevon tip, for durability, I find that very acute angles like this tend to get beat up a lot, so I cut mine down to a 90 degree angle. And then I recommend using foam safe uh, CA glue along these exposed foam edges here. And here, it really toughens it up and prevents it from uh, getting water seepage under there, separation of the tape and paper, and just generally makes it more durable. The next step will be to install the servos in the wing. I prefer to use these 9 gram size. Metal Gear servos. These are digital EXI D213F. They generate plenty of torque. They have good resolution and they're pretty quick, but use your discretion on that. I cut off the mounting ears here, and you will need two of these and the respective servo arms. Before proceeding, be sure that your servo is centered in its travel range by using a transmitter and receiver or a servo tester, and mount the servo arm at 90 degrees to the servo body. You can tell looking at the root end of the wing that there is plenty of room in this rear cavity for the servo to fit. You need it far, far enough forward so that the servo will fit flush with the top surface of the wing or the bottom if that's what you choose, but far enough back so that the, you'll see the servo arm actually needs to protrude a little bit to allow the push rod to clear. So you wouldn't want it in the very deepest part of the wing. I'm going to put it right about here, which when this is adhered to the inner surface of the lower wing right there, it will protrude about five millimeters right there. I find that the rear of the servo at that point is three inches from the trailing edge of the wing airfoil proper, not the elevon itself, but of the wing proper. So I'm going to go with three inches and start the hole there and cut it according to the size of the servo that I've chosen. So the next choice is where to locate the servo inboard or outboard on the wing itself. So I like to place it about a third of the way out. At least somewhere in the middle third is advisable. If it's placed too close to the center here, the elevon itself can warp and you will not obtain the maximum amount of control authority. So think about putting it somewhere between the junction of the middle and central third. My elevon here is 18 inches in span and so I'm going to choose to use a, the one third point at six inches and measure in from there. I will trace a square in the top surface of the wing through which the servo will go and the actual push rod itself will come to seven inches which is in that center third of the elevon itself. Here is where I've traced out the hole for my servo emplacement. Here is the servo placed in its hole and you can clearly see the servo lead is not going to make it to the wing root to engage the receiver in the fuselage. So we'll need a servo extension to go at least from here to the root of the wing and ideally to the anterior or the nose of the wing here 
and then I would give yourself at least six more inches to go into the fuselage and engage whether you have a, a separate extension to come from the receiver or go directly to the receiver itself. I highly recommend the use of these servo extension clips or tape or both. So just drop your servo lead and the extension in the hole and with a little encouragement it will drop right through to the rear channel. Now be sure that it does come out the rear channel proper not through your spar channel too so that that remains clear for the actual spar itself. Affixing the servo into the wing can be done with hot glue, epoxy, Gorilla Glue, whatever you like. I prefer to use 3M two-sided foam heavy-duty mounting tape or Scotch brand and that will typically just have it go right in and will stick right into the bottom of the wing and this, this can be covered with tape or reinforced with a gift card for additional strength. So the servo rests all the way down in the wing with just the servo arm protruding with enough clearance to articulate back and forth to adequately control your elevon. I've covered up my entire servo here and the area around it with a piece of plastic gift card like this with a groove cut through for the servo arm and taped around it. This is optional, adds a little bit of strength. The next step will be to install your control horns in the elevons themselves to connect the servo arm with the elevon. I also like to use plastic gift cards like these and what I like to do is bend them like this. This is two back to back, so one for the left, one for the right. These are the portion that will engage the elevon and this is the part that will engage the push rod. And my preferred way of drilling the holes in the control horns is to use a piece of the actual push rod that I'm going to install on the plane, chuck it up into a rotary tool like a Dremel here, and then just cut it off with some dikes or pliers like this, which will provide a little chisel type tip at the very end that cuts right through the uh, plastic gift cards. And you can cl clamp these back to back so they're perfectly symmetrical. In other words, the distance from the base to the hole where you're going to place it will be the same for both elevons. Put that hole right through. Now we'll be ready to put the, these control horns on the actual elevons themselves. Now first is to locate where your control arm will actually go in the elevon. So what I'd like to do is take a piece of the push rod, engage it into the servo arm, either with a Z-bend or with a quick release adjustable connector and then run this right back perpendicularly to the hinge itself. This is where I'll place a line in the elevon right up to the hinge line. That's where I'll make the incision to place the control horn up through the elevon itself. Here is the incision I've made all the way through the elevon there. And so I'll simply take the control horn with the hole facing forward up through that incision like this and so now it is ready to engage the push rod and I will trim away a little bit of this tape and paper here to expose bare foam and use uh, CA glue to adhere this down very firmly to the exposed foam to give a very strong attachment point. Here's the control horn placed through the elevon the flat part glued and then over taped on the bottom relatively streamlined and this also serves to help reinforce the hinge at that point where most of the force from the servo is born. And you'll notice that the hole from the control horn is the same distance as the distance from the hole you wish to use on the servo to the spindle that is the center of or the axis of rotation more or less. As a good rule of thumb those should be about equivalent more advanced builders can make adjustments to that as they need to, but that will give them close to one-to-one -one articulation between the servo and the control surface. Now it's time to install the push rods between your servo arm and the control horn. I recommend at least one millimeter uh, push rod, preferably thicker, or .047 is a good starting point. Now first you'll want to find the center point of your servo arm, and I like to do that with a servo tester, a BEC and a battery. You can also use uh, your receiver and just center your stick and zero trim, zero position, and that will establish the neutral position of your servo arm. Next, make a Z bend in your push rod 
or use one of these adjustable quick connectors. With your Z-Bend installed in the servo arm, press your Elevon down and either mark adjacent to the hole in your control arm or carefully grasp with some pliers at that point and make your bend. Here you'll see I've made a modified Z-Bend so I've bent it inward towards the control horn and then downwards. Grasp the modified Z-Bend with some pliers and place it in the control arm hole. Ensure that you have a nice secure connection here that's not likely to slip out in any way. Remember, you can always use these guys for adjustment purposes later or just a straight push rod, but in either case, make sure that you have nice, full, smooth articulation of your elevons upwards and downwards, both wings. Now it's time to route the servo leads. I usually recommend having them exit at the nose of the wing. It'll just put them in the closest proximity to your receiver and electronics, but depending on how you mount your wing, you may wish to have them exit out the bottom or the rear. But if going through the front, it's usually as easy as just sort of burrowing a little space right under this former with a blunt instrument and then just tucking it under there. Here are the servo leads routed under the formers towards the nose of the wing. 